All right, man. So uh, here, here we are. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pleasure, pleasure as well. It's so a pleasure as well. Yeah. So you know, um, I, I'm uh, very familiar, you know, with your work. Um, mm -hmm. you know, from all the the movies that um you have produced. Um, for me personally, I'm born in '97, but a lot of the movies that you had a hand in, uh, I grew up on, and I actually watched. You know, up and coming. Those were kind of you know rites of passage. You know, do the right thing. You know what I'm saying, Mal. X, you know, even with school days and, you know, we could go on. Wow. And I mm -hmm. wanted to speak to you about what did, uh, what, in, what inspired you to, to, t to narrate the stories of, you know, African Americans? Well, at the time, uh, you, you got to think like we were, we were, you know, Spike and I both uh, started college uh, pretty much at the same time. And so we were the, we were the kids um, who benefited from the civil rights movement. And by that, I mean, we watched our parents, we watched our grandparents get out there, do, lead the demonstrations, lead the marches. And, and so now after, you know, Malcolm has gone, uh, King has gone, uh, there's a lot of chaos in the country and people are trying to figure things out. So for us growing up in that environment, for us, the thought was, okay, what can we do? What can we do? And so in college, uh, both Spike and I started at Morehouse College, and I eventually ended up graduating from Clark Atlanta University, which was a, across the street from Morehouse. But in that environment, we were very eager to figure out what we could do. So film became a way to communicate those stories. And at the time, um, Spike's whole notion about film was, hey, man, I just want to tell stories and get people engaged. I want people to talk about things that we talk about in private. I said, oh, man, that's risky. He said, I know it's risky, man. He said, but if we can put these stories out here, have high quality, you know, what are the chances? We, we, just, we just never know. I said, all right, man, if you doubt, I'm down. And so from that, work, from that relationship in college, that spilled over into the stories that we knew about. So we took the advice of our English teachers, we took the advice of those around us, our peers, and basically just told the stories as we saw them, and as we saw them happening, the conversations that we had, the relationships that we were going through, and whatever was going on in our society at the time, we were like, yo, this is our perspective. This is how we feel about it. And yes, yes. And that's what jumped off from there. So that's that was the impetus of how all of that stuff jumped off. Wow. So, you know, I think a big important piece that you said was, you know, the world that y'all came up in and were experiencing, y'all inherently put that on screen. And I think for all art, whether, you know, it's uh, the music that I'm doing or the films that you're putting together, you got to reflect the time. Right. Um, and, you know, I feel like with 2020 being one of the craziest years that, that we've had in a long time. Oh, what, what, what are some of the, what, what have been some of the keynotes this year that you've been, you've been observing? Like, oh man, this is, this is, if you were to like, almost like set a scene up for 2020, what mm -hmm. does that look like for you? Well, we had no expectation that things would be volatile as they are. We didn't know there was a pandemic that was around we didn't know that, you know, George Floyd uh, would be killed and when he's killed, you know, and the manner in which he was killed, that that would just set things uh, in motion. And so that, so that, you know, young people could say, hey, look, you know, we're tired. Just, just, just we're tired. We don't know, you know, going forward, we don't know, but we don't have a voice. So again, you know, these periods have, have a way of creeping into to, 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 to the mix. And so it happened when I was a kid, because when I was a kid, man, when, when Dr. King got killed, man, it erupted. And so me, my mom, and my sister, my older sister, we all went, we were, we were right, in the, right in the middle of the looting. We were right in the middle of everything, man. We was just looking, you know, my mom was like, my mom uses those examples as a teaching thing. She said, look, we're gonna tear each other up. We building, you know, so my mom was really into it. it, it I'm, I'm serious. People looting to my left, people looting to my right, and here's my mom giving us these great lessons, you know. And her mm -hmm. lessons were, she said, son, you gotta be a man. You gotta mm -hmm. take full responsibility for yourself. And mm -hmm. even though, you know, terrible things are happening and some of our critical leadership has been killed now, 
you still got to be a man. And so whatever that means to you, you got to be fully accountable and responsible. And sure enough, man, friends was tearing, <laughs> running down yeah. the street with television. <laughs> People were running down the street with sneakers. And I mean, the same, the same environment, you know, that was that was happening, you know, a few weeks ago. That was the same environment my mom was standing there, you know, and we're seeing friends and people and whatever, you know, and we're just standing there watching all that. And then afterwards, you know, my mom dropped some heavy jewels on us, man, and we all went home. And yeah. and from that environment, but I'm gonna tell you, my mom had straight hair at the time. Uh -huh. And so all of a sudden that Saturday, mom came back from the beauty salon, she said, Yo. She had the fro, and we was like, ah! Oh, I got the fro! Yeah. You know, mom was conservative, mom went to church, yeah. that whole kind of thing. So when she came back with the fro, she said, yo, and she had a pick. It was like, yo, she said, yeah. yo. She it said, was a stick. Grow fro. She said, y'all can grow fro's too. We was like, ah, oh, yo, yeah. yo, yo. So it was just like we embraced that part of being black. We embraced, yeah. you know, the fashion, sense of fashion. You had to keep your fro straight. And so we became the household where it was like, yo, you got to keep your fro straight. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, when I, um, I hear a couple of things you said, um, particularly, you know, when you're talking about accountability um, and responsibility. Right. Um, with, with the work that you were doing, particularly like, you know, through working on projects like Malcolm X or, you know, um, Angry Black Man, what, what is it that, do you feel like a, even more of an importance to uphold the conversation that our culture is having? Because I feel a lot of the times with, you know, the news and these big platforms, they don't allow us to narrate our story and our likeness and in our image. And, you know, I, I feel that I'm sure somebody like you has observed, you know, the, the, the countless times that they've misrepresented us on, you know, medias. So how do you feel about the responsibility of just upholding, you know, the culture and sharing those true stories and those true conversations that we have? Well, one of the things is that you always got to understand uh, there is always an agenda, right? And the agenda is always for African-Americans to buy and consume uh, at a certain rate, period. That's, that's the agenda. It doesn't, it doesn't make a difference of the year. It doesn't make a difference if you're older, like myself, or you're younger. The agenda is always for us to be consumers. Well, what begins to happen, we begin to realize, wait a minute, I got to get something out of this too. And so because I got to get something out of this too, you have a cross section of people and what they feel. So the goal, the goal is always, look, regardless of what mainstream is saying, find a way to get your art out there, find a way to get your product, find a way to get your service out there, that's going to empower, mm -hmm. right? Because you never know some of the individuals who are out here, right, who have access to money, who have access to distribution, may want to be involved in what you're doing. So mm -hmm. our involvement, especially at our level, it's never been major Hollywood studios that helped us in the, in the start. It was always one or two key individuals who had access to capital, but mm -hmm. they also had access to distribution. Mm -hmm. And when they, put, when they put their marketing and promotion savvy behind what we were doing, so we took care of our responsibility by making sure we had great stories. Yeah. Great music. Yeah, In other absolutely. words, you couldn't have that. You, just because we got some things going on over here to the left that are, that are, that are devastating, yo, Okay, when you say you're going to rap, let's, let's, okay, we stiff face until like, no, you know, you got to bring yeah, it. Yeah. Same thing with writing a script. You write the script, everybody's like, yo, man, you got, I mean, you got to go back. So basically, yeah. all I'm saying is, is that um, the beautiful thing about it is, is that if you bring your A game into whatever that perspective is, into your product, to your service, right? Mm -hmm. Always believe that there's somebody who says, let's start small and let's grow. Yes. And I'll tell you the reason why is because you never know what you're jump starting. Yes. You may have that one small little window of opportunity. That's literally a window. All the doors are closed. Window of opportunity, you get in, 
you climb up, <laughs> bring your bring your people through, make your presentation. How you get in here? Man, the window was open, man. <laughs> Yeah, nah, <laughs> the doors is, the doors are closed, but the windows are open. Yeah. You know, we came on yeah. through, man. We here now. Listen, we here to make our presentation. You got a remote click, boom, whoa, and that is the inspiration, and that is a metaphor for find the people who can get your product to the marketplace because that may be the spark. That may be the one spark that gets people excited. And the next thing you know, that excitement spreads and, and it hits, uh, uh, it, it, and then it grows. And so a lot of times, I always try to emphasize to, to, to everyone, I don't care whether you're an entrepreneur, I don't care, well, I don't care whatever you're doing, have a great product and get it to the marketplace and you'd be surprised, you know, like you'd be surprised that you have a lot of support out there. And the next thing you know, uh, you got a whole movement started, man. Yeah. That's I mean, yeah, no, nah, that's what I like about that is you, you, you're so aware of the solutions. You know, I feel like at my age, there's a lot of things where I'm able to point the finger and I'm like, okay, I, I realize that this isn't working or that th these things are yeah. a certain way. But like you're saying, you know, understanding the product and what you're bringing into the marketplace, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that you, you just made me realize there's so much more and so many layers to look at this. You know, right. I don't just want to be caught in the conversation of, oh, the police are doing this or all oh, the media is doing this. How can I be educated to create a, a change? Um, so, but, you know, I want to go to another uh, topic real quick. Okay, okay. okay. Juneteenth. So, you know, Juneteenth, as we all know, is, uh, in, in my opinion, this is probably going to be the last year that we, I feel we're not celebrating this collectively as a whole. If sure. it happened this year. But, right. you know, I think, it, you know, it's such an important day to have an actual Independence Day for us as African-American people. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think it was put on late to it, maybe in like the last uh, three or four years. And um, well, how did you come across Juneteenth and what does it mean to you and, and what are you hoping to see with this holiday? Well, you know, it's a, it's a, th these, are, these are moments when uh, mainstream culture when America stops and says, okay, you're right. Let's, op let's, 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 let's put a pause on, wh on, on, what, uh, on what we've done and what our culture is, and now let's move forward. So here's an opportunity for, for people now to officially know that they're free, right? So in those moments, they celebrate that, but you gotta think about something one of the th reasons why the tradition and the legacy continues because those few people who say, listen, we gotta preserve the true meaning of what this day means. It doesn't mean, get excited. Yeah, we're free. We got, some, we got a piece of paper. Great, okay, all right, all right. But in our day-to-day -day dealings with each other, let's really go to work and let's really build the type of culture that in years to come, we can pass that legacy on to our kids, to future generations. And so here we are now, and we have an opportunity perhaps to make it a national holiday. And in that regard though, carrying on the legacy, the true legacy of what I call working behind the scenes. You're always gonna have superstars. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? I haven't yeah. been a superstar. I ain't a superstar. You know, people barely, they say, who, what? No. But <laughs> when you go back to the legacy and you go back to 40 Acres and you go back to what Spike and I did, when we got the opportunity, I on purpose did not want to be out front. I mm. purposely wanted to be, make sure I was at my desk. I, was at, I used to be at my desk before anybody because I wanted to make sure I had my computer set up, I had my clipboard set up, <laughs> because I wanted, because I wanted the office to be a place where people could feel that they were empowered, and that's the same thing with Juneteenth. Yeah, Juneteenth is to be recognized to empower, not necessarily I mean, let's celebrate, man. Let's sing, let's let's dance, let's be festive, let's eat well, let's deal with our nutrition, let's deal with health concerns, let's deal with COVID nineteen, let's give blessings to the ancestors. Let's get let's let's do it all. Yeah. But yeah. at the end of the day, 
let's keep these proposals going. If there's some grants that need to be written, don't be sitting back saying, you know, well, no, come on, bro. Give us 10% of your time to help us with this grant. Give us 20% of your time to help these kids. Because the real meaning and the impact is all of that work that needs to be done behind the scenes to yeah. make sure that we are empowered and keep things moving forward in the tradition in which we like. Yeah. And keep that ball moving down the hill. Now, that don't mean everybody who's out front get all the glory. No. Nah, yes. Embrace this and bring the whole team up, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Really let though. cats come. Let yeah. cats come from over here. The cats is coming yeah. from over here. We all up here, y'all. This is a universal. My name might be on this award. But this is right here. This is the collective. The collective is responsible for everything. This person makes sure we eat good. This person makes sure our nutrition is straight. This person makes sure that, you know, every time we have an idea, we make a, a presentation, make sure all the graphics are straight. You know, to make yeah. sure the impact is felt because the collective is what we need. Beyond, yes. I love the lip service. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I love, it, I love it, the speeches. It. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, Juneteenth, everybody. Brr, brr. <laughs> <laughs> Cass gonna, gonna bring it. You know, we're gonna be up. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Monday morning, Monday morning, or the next day, though, hit send on that proposal. Be able to be able to to know that that in the trenches, we all have to play this part because what keeps the tradition. And what keeps the spirit alive is the detail work. And for me, I man, I love that stuff. And, and, and people have gotten to know me over the years. And they're like, man, you like this stuff, don't you? You like the fine print. And I'm like, yeah, man, I do, man. I, give me a contract to read. Man, I sit there and read that stuff, man. Get my herbal tea. Get my yeah. stuff, man. And, and I'm, I'm totally immersed in it because for me, I love that stuff, man. I love I love that part of our culture, and I and and I was inspired, man, by a lot of people. I was inspired by people in college at uh, at Clark College, right, yeah. who could talk like we're talking, put their keys on the table, and then give a whole lecture on biology, the whole anatomy of the human structure, you know all the terminology, right. So I, my yeah. first year of college, bro, I was sitting there going. Yo, this homeboy just put his keys on the table, grabbed some chalk, and he's, he's breaking down the whole anatomical structure of the body, of the brain, of cells. Yo, man. It was so it's much on my head, <laughs> only because yeah. I was just impressed with that. And, and I'm just simply saying that that is a tradition that has to be passed on to each generation because your, your, your base comes from those details, man. And it comes yes. from Juneteenth being celebrated. Yeah, yes. let's, let's enjoy ourselves. Let's have a good time. But at the yes. same time, the next day when somebody says they have an idea, they have things going on, let's be there to support each other. And if you can't give a, a, full, a full day's work, et cetera, et cetera, Give what you can so that so that this thing can move forward and we can get the legislation passed. And not only that, and then we can make it festive each year. Yeah. You know, so that so it doesn't linger into like, oh right here we no. Nah, let's every year plan to make it better, a better celebration than the previous years. And then with the passing of that, it becomes this grand holiday because not only are we not only are we celebrating it, but we make sure that every year Man, we bring a better celebration. Like what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's cool. we need to. <laughs> you I see what I'm saying? Like so so yeah. it grows because not only is it a holiday, but it becomes very festive each year because marketing, promotion. So that each generation get a chance to define it and we and we pass this legacy on, man. So so yeah, man. Yeah, I'm I'm a you know, I'm a fireball, man. I, I like I said, the things that really got me into to the business was the spike was always out front, but I knew we needed infrastructure. And so at the company, people would tell you, man, oh, that's Monty, you know, he's there early in the morning, late at night, you know, because I wanted, I wanted our company to grow. 
And uh, as I look back over my career, which has almost been like 40 years, man, I have primarily worked for, for black men. Black men have been my bosses. Throughout yeah. 40 years of all of this, I've had maybe two black, and then I've had two black women uh, who ran program, nonprofit programs. But for the most part, I have been working with black folk, man, for, for a long, a long time, man. And they've got a great feeling. That's a great feeling. And we've supplied and we have uh, provided some great content, you know, to the marketplace, man. And, and when I look at the numbers, it's almost up to four or five hundred million in terms of the value of the, of, the, of the projects that I work with Spike on. But when I look at Air Jordan, for example, the Air Jordan sneaker over the years, man, that brand has exceeded, you know, billions of billions of dollars into the marketplace. And it all started from, you know, a conversation that we had with Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan gave a small production company its shot. You know what I'm saying? So for me, that's the vision. And to be able to have this conversation with you, man, to talk about movies and culture and life and, and what it takes. Like I said, I love the I love the confrontation. Let's get up and get 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 right up in this confrontation. <laughs> but when we go yeah. home, let's back <laughs> and get <Yeah>. let's unpack <laughs> it. Let's, let's unpack it and, 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 keep the, and keep the momentum going, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I 100% agree. Like, with everything you were saying, even when you were talking about, you know, having something to pass down to, to help, you know, validate and express that love for being black, even to what you said earlier with moms coming home with the fro and what that does for you moving forward, you know? It's right, like, right. so there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, of, love for black that I feel like we haven't as a culture been able to express right. throughout this country in a loud way. You know, a lot of the conversation, like you're saying, needs to be had at home. It needs to be had, you know, in our cribs. Like, yo, you know, by the way, you know, we need to make sure that we're educated on the fact that, you know, it doesn't just start with slavery. As you know, right. even when it comes to the advancements we've given to culture across the world, you know what I'm saying? It right. has, right. has started way before, you know, this country in America. And I feel that as I've continued to got to get older and I'm looking and I'm reading, I'm realizing like, oh, okay, this is, there's so much more to our history that I, I wasn't right. familiar with, but I've been, you know, picking up a lot of books. I think Juneteenth, you know, in general, it just, with the climate that we have going on, man, we mm -hmm. need it today. I, I want right. to, I want to be able to turn it up. I need some good black food. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I just want to bring everything together. I want to, you feel me? Just sit on on a nice summer day. But you know, right. I also wanted to talk about because you know we were talking about culture and the arts and mm -hmm. at, at the same time that you guys are doing so much uh, groundbreaking work on film, so much groundbreaking work is done in hip hop. As, mm -hmm. as well, well, not just hip hop because it's all a culture, but with the music specifically. Right. So, you know, well, for one, are you a hip hop head? And if you are, who, who, who are the artists that, you know, are staying with you to this day? And who are some of the artists that you feel make music that could even help narrate the times that we have going on? Well, I, I was very fortunate uh, to uh, produce, oh man, when it came to music videos and hip hop, uh, let's see, I, I did the uh, Jizza from Wu-Tang Clan, uh, he, he Liquid Swords album. I uh, produced one, two, three, three cuts on that, you know. Really? Uh, also, Ghostface Killer had uh, a, a song or two on the Sunset Park soundtrack. I produced that. And uh, all, th all through my relationships with, uh, one of the reasons why, because I had the production insurance. And so I got a call from a good friend, Jeffrey Garfield, who said, hey, man, yo, we out here, man. We need, you know, I'm working with Wu-Tang. I said, cool, 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 man. That's what's up, what's up, you know? And he said, man, we need insurance. You got your insurance? I said, yeah, man, you know, I, I'm staying ready. I got my production insurance and he said that. So I got up out of my bed and, and just started, you know, micromanaging, putting the budgets together and things like that. And the next thing I know, man, I'm, I'm hanging out with Wu. And uh, we, we just shot commercials. I mean, we shot the music videos back to back. So Wu-Tang Clan is, is one, one group, man, I always looked up to, man. And uh, so we, we, we did some really, really great work, you know, working with them. Um, of, of course, man, it's, it's, it's I, you know what? The beautiful thing about hip hop to me is that 
sometimes people say stuff is num uh, mumble rap, some things, you know, this or that, or, or doesn't speak to whatever. I always, I always look at the fact that hip hop is like, what, 40, 40 years old, maybe going on, maybe 45. And the, the form, the, the spoken word, you know, each artist keeps pushing stuff forward. You know what I mean? And so, you know, Grandmaster, you know, there, there's, there's so much about hip hop, man, you know, whether it's, whether it's, whether it's cats, because ultimately what happens in hip hop is this, one cat will start and dude is like, oh, he's nice. Then another dude got to battle him. So I'm, I'm into all aspects. Of, I've been into all levels of the hip hop, you know, whether it's Big Daddy Kane, you know, whatever, whatever it was in each, each, each time there's, there's a group of, of cats who get recognized and even the underground, man. I've been in some places, man, where it's been some sticky situations. We underground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we go, yo, we go, we all right. We all right. Yeah, man, you cool. You cool. Cool, man. Just chill. Just chill. You know, so I've been I've been in all kinds of situations, man, in love of of hip hop and love of people, you know, expressing themselves. Because as a filmmaker, man, I hear the words and the images start, you know. So I love I love I love that. But uh, but specifically, man, I would just say that you know whether it's you know everybody has their best stuff. So some people may call some things their worst stuff, but for me. I'm dissecting and I'm looking at, I'm listening to the parts. So sometimes I might listen to Drake. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. Future might pop up with something, man. Then, then some cast from down south may come yes, up yeah, with something. Yes, and then yes, somebody sir. may send me, I mean, where does this come from? This might be overseas, you know, this might be whatever. So for me, it's just like a collection of, of people who are pushing the culture forward, whether people agree with what should be said, how it should be said, and things like that. Joe Button, Joe Biden, whatever my man is, um, yep. um, uh, whatever he's. Oh, hold on, one second. Oh, okay, whatever he is saying at the moment. My whole thing is, my whole thing is like, yo, Joe. Um, okay, cool, man. I know you you coming down hard. It should be this. It should be that. I know you got to do your best on your show, but at the same time, you know the fact chance is doing his thing independently and he wants young people to know you can you can have a company independently and you can still deliver content <laughs> you yeah. know whether it's music film whatever to your audience and get paid and still have your staff you don't yeah. necessarily have to give everything away and be sitting at home mad because you had to give everything away because you signed a, a, a deal that is just not you know uh for you you can do your own deals so I love, I love, man, man, me and culture and, and, and the black aesthetic, bro, yeah. bro, I, I can, I, all I can tell you is this, all I can tell you, I got some friends who take me to certain places and I'd be like, oh man, I can't let nobody <laughs> 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 I'm up in the spot, man. But it's like, okay, if this is my man. He got to make his. He got to make his money today this way. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, man, come on, dude, hurry up, <laughs> so we, yeah, yeah. we can go back. So all aspects of of, of hip hop, I love it. I embrace it. Yeah. Um, I'm always trying to to get uh, young folk to, to understand, like some of the old heads. I don't know where to go and look for and listen to. You know where, where, where? Okay, where's the new music at? Where's it coming from? Because I don't, you know, it's it just I don't know how to go and look for it. So I'm always like, hey man, y'all got to bridge the gap. Y'all got to tell me, you know, what's hip and what's, what 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 that should be listed to and that and that sort of thing. You know, I, I can deal with it all. The cursing, you know, I don't. I mean, all of it, all of it. Yeah. Because to me, it's all young people trying to figure it out and they're trying to they're trying to reach an audience and they're trying to speak to the culture and then trying to embrace the culture and build wealth, yes, trying to absolutely. build wealth. And sometimes it's negative to some certain people, but for the most part, yo, um, I, I embrace all of, I embrace yeah. black culture, man. Cause I, cause I love it, man. I, I, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I just love, I love the culture and I, and I love it. I've, I've loved it for, for, for so long. And like I say, um, to be sitting here with you rapping about this, man, you don't know. It this 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 is uh this is this is real cool for me because I because I because <laughs> you know I'm like oh man people don't know man I just go to work you know and yeah, yeah. the people the people I work with now they're like man 
you you like a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but there's so many gems that you've been yeah. able to do this. I'm just, I'm just yeah. taking it in, and I'm appreciative too because I feel like now more than ever through all the generations, it's just time for all of us to be in conversation right. with one another. You know, I agree. I, so agree. I understand. Like I'm picking up so much. Like when I go back to my homie, same way you said, I'm in a couple positions. Yeah, I might be in. You know, I might be able to use <laughs> these jewels and these gems. You know, yeah. to, to help, you know, shift perspectives and change some, some you know, narratives. But right. um, I wanted to say to you, uh, so with with all the, the, the trial and tribulation and, and the systemic oppression you've witnessed and experienced as mm-hmm. a black man, what was something that you began to realize in your later years that you would tell somebody like myself or just my generation in general? That's something we, we may want to be mindful that we may all not be looking at right now. Um, I think one of the big things I would say uh, to everyone is this, is that um, there's enough for everybody. And by that, I mean, um, sometimes what has a tendency to happen is that partnerships and groups and folks break up because uh, one check might come in and that particular check is earmarked for that person and not the group. And what has a tendency to happen is that one person feels they're entitled to all of the, all of the, the, the benefits that that check brings and exclude everybody else, or you got to come aboard and we're not equal in this partnership anymore, even though we've all struggled. So I would say that one of the things that each generation should really embrace is embrace the differences within the group. Yeah. And go for an equal split as much as you possibly can. Go for an equal split so that everybody can fully benefit, right? So that everybody can pay their rent. Everybody yeah. can pay their mortgage. And then you can have wealth and grow. And if, and if you all have that wealth, that wealth growth mentality, what happens is now you can look back five, six years later and everybody is prosperous. Yeah. Everybody has a everybody has stock options and you all grew together, right? <laughs> um, that's so to me that that right there, that divide and conquer mentality, yeah. uh, I wish, man, I wish I could just shoot that and just get, get rid of it because at the end of the day, we all are different. Some of us have different perspectives about uh, how we should achieve our goals, but at the same time, if we can work together and and, and you know we all benefit from from our labor and we all benefit from our ideas yeah let's 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 do that i know that sounds idealistic but there should be no reason why in certain partnerships or in certain endeavors one is over here one is over there one still at home yo man the homies don't even reach out to me no more man they don't yeah. show me no love. And you're like, why? And it's, I don't know, man. I don't know. And you, and you begin to understand that in, that, in certain moments, if there's, there's a high regard from the fans or whatever it is, there's a high regard for the art, one person may feel like, I need to dominate everything. Yeah. Mm, nah, man, come on. You, you know, you know homie was asleep and then woke up and dropped the mad verse. You know homie came up with the ideas for the shot. You know, home. You you come on, man. Let's let's yeah. you know. And so for me, I was I would collectively say that we all are gonna work hard. We all work hard. But when the full benefits of the labor come in, of our labor, and and let's all celebrate so we can all progressively, you know, you know, um, yeah, move forward. You know, and, and and let's let's get this jealousy out. Let's get the jealousy out of the way. You know, because at the end of the day. You got 14 cars. Okay, yes. cool. I got one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I may like my Toyota Corolla, yo. Okay. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, word. You, got all, you got all the whips. I don't, I don't need to have 13 other Toyota Corollas. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good with my one. You got your 13, 14. You got a whole, whole wall of sneakers. All right, cool. I got one or two. It's good, man. It's good. It's love. Come on, let's keep making these things happen, you know. So the the diversity within us, the diversity within our culture, we got to learn to embrace that so that we're not excluding each other 
and 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 one person has to be bigger than the other person and and one person has to get it all no let's let's all collectively understand that we're all different but we all want the same thing and we all want to wake up knowing that uh the thing that we want to wake up knowing is that we have a we have a fair shot yeah. we got a fair shot yeah. and uh whatever it is that the society needs to advance it doesn't always need to make young black men the sacrifice mm. to advance. Yeah. When, you, when you strategically look at it, look at every time there's a, there's, a, there's a major upheaval in this country, it always goes back to black women, black men being the sacrifice. And then society says, oh, yeah, 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 we can, oh, my God, we got, no, come on. Y'all know y'all got a problem. Every single time, <laughs> yo. Every, like all of a sudden the revelation just happened and now we all <laughs> And it's like yeah. no, no, no. We we know you have issues. You know you got issues. Yeah. So let's just be man and woman enough to sit down and really confront this before all this chaos happens. Yeah. so that we have a plan that's in place before and we don't have to have bloodshed to lead the way i think we at a point in time now where technology tells us that we all can benefit without bloodshed i i, I think it's state of the art i think it's a, we're in a state of the art technological society i think i think if you want to fly in a plane all day and you have the money to, to live in a plane all day. You can do That's so. your life. I believe you. I believe you can do so. Mm -hmm. I believe <laughs> that you can. Sit, I believe with your cash up, you can send money to most countries around the world. I believe that. So I think we are technologically a state of the art. Yeah. It only takes a certain amount of manpower to build a skyscraper these days, right? Yeah. Or even so why can't we? Why can't we live together? Why are you still looking at me? Because I'm going to jog this way and go to my bike trail or do whatever I'm doing suspiciously. I'm trying to stay healthy, dude. <laughs> Your house and what you trying to do and oh, I don't care. You know, yeah. we live in the same area. So I'm just, I'm just merely saying. I, I, I really feel at the end of the day, man. Again, thank you for allowing me. Uh, to share, I hope I hope I have spoken in complete sentences. Oh, uh, y'all, and and, I, and, I, and and you know we we talked about a lot, but I I, I think the, the the power of what you're doing, uh, bro, is 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 is, uh, is is awesome, man. It's awesome, and 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 to reach out and say, hey, man, you know, there's some other people can help us think about what we're doing, man. You yes. see, that's the that's the thing. Sometimes you just need a conversation. You just need to hear some other thoughts. Be like, "Damn, man, what's up, OG man? Yeah. Damn, man, you that's what you've been thinking about, bro. That's that's what I had to think about because <laughs> you asked about survival. For me, man, you got to keep low key. You yeah. got to breathe. You have to breathe deep, and you got to let some stuff slide down your back, bro. You you you. You gotta, you gotta take a walk. You gotta yeah. take a walk, man. I, I've always, for me, I gotta take a walk, man. I, yeah, nigga. That's like, <sighs> man, it's Monty Boss. Thank you so much for- No problem, not time. a problem. Thank you so much for the words. And you know, I just wanna say this, you know, in closing, that I do feel that a lot of, you know, what uh, you have done and what I continue to do can all be exemplified through Juneteenth you know, through right. making a Juneteenth a national holiday about that unity, about the right. culture, about us being represented, about us right. spending our money, right. everything. I feel like if we have a day at least, we can start there. And, you know, let's turn it into an everyday, you know, situation. You know, right. from being a uh, legendary in the art of visual, you know, through groundbreaking, uh, you know, filmmaking and, you know, expressing African-American culture in an unapologetic way, and setting the tone for the likes of, you know, myself. I just want to say thank you. You know, you're I welcome, really man. You're welcome. It, man. Um, I look forward to um hopefully meeting up one day should this, you know, quarantine and everything die down. Yes, you know, sir. Yes, sir. And we can you know, chop it up some more. Um, but you know, bless again, we can go to Juneteenth right, US for the people who will be tuned into this. 
um, Juneteenth that U.S. to uh, sign a petition. Let's make this an actual holiday, you know, yes, and uh, with the wise words and jewels that we continue to drop, let's just share the knowledge. Like you said, with technology nowadays, it ain't nothing to share the knowledge. So share the continue, knowledge, right. Keep these conversations going. All right, thank you, man. I, I totally appreciate it, man. All the best to you, man. Uh, if you yeah, need me, holler. I'll, I'll do what I can. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely, man. Much love. Right. God bless. Much love. All right, God bless.